Welcome to JLo Artist YouTube channel. It's Inktober, and it's time to get out the pens, dust off those kneaded erasers, and let's be drawing with ink. We're going to start out with our number two pencil and just do our layout. One thing that you want to do is when you're thinking about composition, and, and our composition here is just this uh, 9 by 12 piece of paper, but you kind of look at your reference, and here her arm is kind of straight up this way and her back is like right here so if you want to put that closer to this edge that'll give her some breathing space over here and i've kind of um, already cut off our picture a little bit cropped it so it's a little more compositionally correct but look at the space of the head how much of that head do you see you know and so i, I start out and just say well i want it I want her head to be somewhere up in here. That's going to give me a little bit of play space in case I need to increase the hair a little bit. But uh, I just kind of figure out that's about where I want her head. And her head is what? About a fourth? So if I if I divide this into fours, I can pretty much say, okay, if that's about a fourth of the way there, I can come in there and maybe that's that's how much of her head I want to see. So you can kind of start out with that little oval. Just her head. There's her head. And then the shoulders, you got to come down about, um, oh, a, a third of the head. So if you divide the head up into thirds, you come down about a third of the space, and that's about where the shoulders come. Got to give her space for her neck. And then the shoulder's going to come down here. And again, you want it relating to the edge here, but not too close, but not too far away. You don't want her smack dab in the middle. Then you can say, well, I want that gauntlet to be down in here somewhere. You know, her, her hand, that wrist. And if you want to know the, uh, the names of armor, I've built enough armor that uh, I know what everything is and how it's made. So I'm just now, I've got my size and everything. I'm just, with simple shapes, just putting in the shapes of things that I see. And it does help to understand things. So as we draw along, I'll probably explain a little bit of the armor and what's going on with it. I'll even show you an easy way to draw chainmail. That's something that I always had a trouble with. You got to draw every little ring. Come on, you don't. That's the cool thing about it. And I'll show you a uh, a technique of drawing where you use little little S's or little C's. So now I'm just going to block in her head. Um, have we gone over head face proportions yet? If you take from the very top of her head to her chin, the eyes are about right smack dab in the middle. Sometimes we, we put them up too high because we think of the face as being more dominant, but really you've got quite a bit of forehead. And a lot of that is covered up with hair. So if you go from the top of the cranium to the chin and go right down the middle, that's about where the eyes go. And you can just block it in. You just go, okay, there's one eye, there's the other. And it's not quite halfway, but if you go halfway between where you just blocked in the eyes and the chin, you kind of go halfway and then come up a little bit, make a little shadow. That's kind of where the nose is going to go. That's the shadow of the nose. And then you divide that space in half and not quite, but about right up in there is the mouth, the lip. And you just adjust that too to whatever you think you need to. I know it's kind of hard to see my drawing. Maybe see if I does that help? I don't know if that helps or not. I should draw a little heavier for you. Let me let me back this up so you can see what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. 
The cheek, if you go from the tip of the nose out, that's always where your cheekbones go. And so the height of the cheekbone. And then your mandible, your jaw, kind of turns just below where your, your mouth is. So that gives it a little bit of space. And we're not doing a portrait here, so if you don't want to draw her the way she is, you're more than welcome to change it a little bit. She's a guide. That's all we use this scrap for is a guide. And the hair, I'll show you how to do this hair, and you'll, you'll think, oh, that's the easiest hair I've ever done. It's so nice with ink. If you want to um, also put in some of the plates, um, don't worry about like the little curves. And they've got these little scallops that are on the, these are called pauldrons right here. So these, the, the, the shoulder pieces, those pauldrons. And you just use little lines to say this is where they go. One thing that I like about the armor is as it curves, it accentuates the body. I'm going to change this breastplate just slightly and give it more of a feminine look. One thing I never got to do, and I guess I still could sometime, but make a, a breastplate for a woman. Never done that. Made lots of men's. So we're going to concentrate on this upper torso part, the face, the upper torso. And as we get down here and to the horse's mane and its neck and everything, uh, that will just kind of throw in. Everybody knows it's there, but it's not something that we're really going to concentrate on. So with this, this all this does is it, it gave us our composition, our proportions. And we might have to adjust it a little bit as we go. We're going to start out with the face. My opinion, when you're drawing people, if you can nail the face, if you get the face exactly the way you want it and it looks good, everything else is going to fall into place. Because your viewer goes right to the face, their eye, everything else kind of just, they know it's there, they look at it, but it's the face has to be just right. So I always spend a little extra time on the face. I always get asked, where do you start? And it's like, I don't know. I start with the eye, just because eyes are important to me. So I'm going to start with the eye, and I just want to give you just a couple little um, things about the eye. When I do the eye, I always start with the upper eyelid, and then the iris part, you never really see all of the iris. And so you do a little bracket, little bracket, little bracket. Because the bottom part of the eye covers up, or the bottom part of the iris is, gets covered up by that lower eyelid. And so you never draw the entire circle of the eye, unless they're surprised or, you know, their eyes are really wide. Then I guess you could. The other thing is, is I can't see what's going on inside this eye. And so I have... Um, just some basic basics that I just always do. I know that there's going to be a shine in here somewhere. So if I just throw in a little circle like that and say, well, that's a shine, and then the pupil kind of goes around that, this pen is dying. I've only done about six drawings with it, maybe seven. Uh -oh. I know. So, and then... Um, you know that the, the iris has these little striations in it, kind of go out like that. So those are just some of the things that I know. I know that the outside of the eye is going to be a little darker. 
So I can go back in, I can just touch that a little bit. I also know that the eye, the white part of the eye is not white. So I'm going to go through it and you can just put these little patch lines through there like that. Now, notice we haven't done anything on the bottom. There's no bottom lid there at all. These are just standard eyes that I always do. I can go in and I do some eyelashes. I know that the outside of the eyelashes, you see more of those. And as they get to the middle of the eye, they kind of come straight up. And as they get over here, they kind of come this way. And... Oftentimes, there's a little bit of eyelash on the bottom. But remember, right there at the bottom, you've got, you've got moisture that's kind of right there. And you're going to get a little shine. You're going to get a highlight. And so that's kind of how I standardized my eyes. When you can't see what's going on, you kind of know, hey, that eye's going to have a shine in it. It's going to have a pupil. It's going to have the iris. It's not completely white. And then any wrinkles or things that are around the eye, depending on how, how they are. Some people have these little happy, smiley wrinkles next to their eye. So you're just going to use little, little dots and dashes. Oftentimes, there's a shadow under the eye. And so you just use little dots and dashes for that as well. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. And I'm just going to go ahead and draw. I'm not going to say anything because... I just told you how to do it. So you start out with that curve of the eye. And depending on where they're looking, she's looking out straight out at us. So that iris is going to go over here a little bit more in the corner. There's a little shine there. So instead of doing a round circle for the pupil, I'm going to do a little half circle, a little um, Pac-Man kind of a... That's your... And you just leave that little shine out. Sometimes there's a double line where the eyelid fits into the head. And then your eyebrows, if you put those in, are just little lines. And they go in the direction that the eyebrow flows. So... Humans are like animals. Your hair is going to go from the middle of your head out this way, from the middle of the head out this way. So look at your eyebrows. They flow that way. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of line in there, dots and dashes. Be very soft when you touch with your ink. Little dots and dashes. Some eyelashes if you need them. I always like eyelashes, especially on the female. The male, you don't need so many eyelashes. A little bit underneath. And there's your eye. Piece of cake. If there's a shadow in there, just use little hatch lines. Like down the bridge of the nose, rather than draw a line down there, just do little hatch lines in that shape of that little triangle that's there. And it's often there. Little dots and dashes, and then that's it. Sometimes there's a little darkness around the eye right there. Females actually add makeup there, eyeshadow or whatever it's called. And now if I get rid of my graphite, that graphite turns it kind of gray. So if you get rid of your graphite, it just makes it nice and bright. Your highlight's going to come through. It's just going to look better. And I'm going to do the same thing with the other eye. There's the eyebrow.
little dots and dashes. One thing you never want to do is draw a line down the nose. Unless it's a profile, of course. But, but here, there's no line. You don't see anything here. They're just little shadows. So what you do is under the nose, where the little nose is, and if you want to, and you're thinking, I don't know if I, you know, I'm scared about putting that nose in, you can draw in the tip of the nose, just ever so lightly, where the tip of the nose goes. And if you come straight down off the tear ducts, that's where your um, nostril goes. And you can kind of just say, okay, there's, there's the tip of the nose, there's the nostril. And so that's what you're going to draw, just the tip of the nose. Here's a little nostril. Your nostril is like a little upside down Nike swoosh with a couple little lines in it. There's little dots and dashes for the nostril, and you got it. If there's more shadow, and she's got quite a bit of shadow under there, I'm just going to throw that shadow in with these little hatched lines. And that's about it. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. Underneath her nose, you've got that little divot that kind of comes down. So I may want to come in and put in that little divot. Sometimes for the lips, you don't want to draw a line around the lips. Unless they're quite dark. Her lips aren't really that dark. So what I'm going to do is for that top lip, I'm just going to come in. Let me just start with these little hatched lines in the shape that the lip goes. And then put some little dots and dashes, especially right there towards the I don't know what it's called, but where your lip kind of dips down in the middle there. And your bottom lip is just this little sh this little shadow underneath, and it's done in the same way. You do a little shadow, little dots and dashes. And if you want to, you can add some line to the bottom lip, but you don't want to add too much. We can add more to it if we need to. The hair does kind of accentuate this side of the head. So I am going to use line to show up that side of the head, that, that curve of the head. So I'm going to just start up here with the eyebrow, kind of come in. There's the cheek, kind of comes out. Tip of the nose, the cheek curves back in. And right below the, where the mouth is, that's where your jaw is going to curve. chin. And for this side, you can see where her cheekbone is and everything. I'm just going to use these hatch lines over there as well. So I'm just going to hatch through that. Your little cheek right there. There's some chin over here. Cross hatching through that because it's pretty dark right there. A couple dots and dashes. Voila, we got it. Piece of cake. If there's any wrinkles in the neck, it follows a muscle, that sternocleidoid mastoid kind of muscle that's down in there. You just use your hatch lines in there. And this is all dark. This is just shadow created by the hair. You can start out, just hatch through it. Eventually, we're going to get the hair flowing through there. So when you start the hair, the hair, you never draw a line there. Then it looks like a wig or something, you know. Um, your hair comes into your head. So I'm just going to start out. Look at where her hair starts. And you just do these little lines going towards edge of the hair. Same thing over here. These little lines are going to come out this way. And they just kind of fan out. 
you can figure out where the curve of the hair goes. There's a lot of shadow under there. So I'm just going to, these are going to be just little guidelines for me to figure out where the hair flows. So I'm just doing little guidelines. Some hair kind of flows around, goes up and over. You can even have little hairs that are not even connected to the head. They just can kind of hang out there at the top. But that looks like wispy hair that's, you know, doing its own thing. Hair does that, as most of you know. So I'm just going to use these lines to show the direction that the hair flows. And what's going on with the hair? You know, sometimes the hair just is fly away. Sometimes it's very rigid. Okay, so now that I've got these guidelines for my hair, then I can come back into it and just darken certain areas. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go in and pick out the darkest areas where the hair is. So there's some right here. I'm just going to, in the direction that that hair flows, just use these zigzaggy lines. And then I'm going to skip some. Here's some other darkness right here. There's some more over here. So I just want to go in the direction that the hair flows with those lines. The closer your lines are together, the darker the value. And all of a sudden, you're going to have hair, and you're going to go, oh, how'd I get that hair? It just, just lines. And if you really want it dark, you can just zigzag through some of those darkness, like Right down in here where it's really dark, I can just go down in there and just scribble, 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 scribble. And it doesn't matter which direction you go because it's got to be dark anyway. You just, just scribble. Over here, those shadows accentuate or define the head. And so I'm going to just go through and pick out some of those darker areas. The hair flows around here. And if I don't like the curve of the head, which I really, I think I'm going to just curve it in a little bit more. Give her a little leaner face. Just a bit. I can do that. The other thing, too, is when you're drawing with ink, sometimes you think, oh, that's dark enough or I, I put enough line in there. Just leave it out because you can always come back in later. So I'm looking at her eyes and, and face and everything thinking, okay, I could go a little darker there if I want to. If you, uh, I'm going to get rid of this graphite that's in there. All that graphite's got to go. It just makes it look better, just nicer. You may want to say to yourself, well, you know, maybe maybe the lip needs to go a little darker. Maybe I need a little 
a little more line here or there. Corners of the mouth are always darker. So I always have a little bit thicker line in the corner of the mouth. And also, she's got these little kind of smile lines there. If you wanted to put those in, you could. Um, those are just going to be little hatched lines that go like this. I'd be very careful about putting in any of those little smile lines because they make your look older. See how older she looks there? And so sometimes you're just like, eh, I'm going to leave them out. Or if they're smiling and they're pretty pronounced, you can just do uh, like a, a few of them there. But it still makes them look older. So it's up to you, uh, you know, what you decide to do. I'm just going to leave them out. Anytime you add line to the face, even though you see it and they look young, you add them and then all of a sudden it puts on, you know, 10 years to their life. This is also, if you like superheroes, um, graphic novels, you know, most of those have people in them. So if you want to make money in the field of art, learn how to draw people. Lines in the hair do not even need to connect. Don't, don't think of it like spaghetti. Think of it like just shapes of dark and light. Now, as fun as the face is, the armor is going to be a lot of fun. Let me show you some techniques about doing the armor. Basically, when one plate lays against another plate, you're going to have a little shadow underneath it. And you can see those little shadows coming down in, in just about everything because this armor is built in um, overlapping plates. And they're probably connected with leather straps on the inside so that they move independently. And knowing that, then you can just say, well, okay, I see where this, there's a little rolled edge, there's a little dark edge that goes underneath that. I can put in that little dark edge, that little shadow that's there. And then just go ahead and, and skip a little bit and say, well, okay, here's this little shadow right here. I'm just going to throw that in. And it defines where that other plate goes. And instead of drawing a line, just draw a little shadow. And it's just this little hatched line. And you, you kind of imagine that's where my edge is. And then you just kind of leave a little space there and you can continue on. Because that metal is turned right there. You can see a thickness of the metal. You're going to have an edge there. So you just leave that and you just go on to the next one. And that just defines that whole edge. And that's all you need. You don't need to draw every individual plate. Even though it looks like I did, I really didn't. You guys saw what I did. And just draw the darks and lights. And if you can't see what's going on, just, just draw what you, you can see. It'll come through. There's so many times that I've been drawing things. I have no idea what I'm drawing. 
And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, I get that. I, I see what that is. The other day I was drawing something. It was a, an old house that was on top of a river or something. It was built on this river, and there was something underneath it, and I'm drawing it, and it finally hit me. Oh, that's a boat. I didn't know it was a boat. So don't worry about it. Just draw what you see. Shapes of dark and light, anyway. There's a little shine across the spalder, across the pauldron there. That And rivets. Rivets are easy. You see all these little rivets that are in here? Just do little C shapes or little U shapes. So as I see this little rivet that's right down in there, I'll just do this little U shape. And that's it. Because they're little round-headed things. Some of this has hair over the top of it. You can put in those little swirls of hair if you want to. She's got a lot of hair. Which is good, I guess. If there's a shine, just hatch through it. The shape that you see. Don't don't necessarily use line there. You could just leave those shadows kind of hanging out there. I mean, they're not really attached to anything because that metal is so light, it's, it just kind of blends in the background. And yet everybody knows what it is. Any shines you see, you can just throw those in as little little hatched lines or little, I mean, do all sorts of things with them. So here, that little, that little, um, shine that you have there, that little reflected whatever that is, uh, you just throw that in. It'll define the edge. Leave out a little space, and then that defines the edge of that plate. So if I leave out a little space and then just keep going on, that's the edge of that plate. And then I can leave out a little edge there, and there's the edge of that plate. You just leave it out. Everybody gets that that's connected. Especially if you're going to do fantasy stuff. Uh, a lot of fantasy stuff includes armor. Whether it's historical or futuristic. For some reason, we still have armor in the future. Although in the case of like stormtroopers, it really doesn't work. Which I never got that, you know. How come you're wearing all that armor if you just get shot right through it?
One day I should write a book called The Art of Scribbling. Because that's really all we're doing, just scribbling. As long as your darks and lights are in about the right places, it's going to look good. Here on these edges of the steel, it blends into the background. It's the same color as the background. So don't put it on. I mean, if you, if you can't see it, just leave it out. Everybody knows it's there. Everybody sees that edge without having you have to draw it in. And there goes my graphite there. The faster you get rid of your graphite, the better it looks, in my opinion. And maybe that's why a lot of artists don't even put the graphite in there. These are little little brass pieces, little flowers that are there. That's what those are. They're hard to see. I just know what they are because I've made them before. And I just keep looking back at what I've just drawn, and you just keep scribbling. The farther you get away from the head, the faster you can draw, because then you're just like, I'm not concerned. Everybody kind of sees what they want to see, and I just go in and scribble in some stuff now, and not be worried about what it is. Chain mail, let me let me get this edge of this fold here, and then uh, we'll get that chain mail in. It's called a four-on-one, a little pattern. You see the little S's? Can you see the little S's yeah. back and forth? So that's, that's really what you do. You just start out with little C's or S's, um, and... And you just kind of go around the body in layers. And if you want to, you can take your pencil and you just make yourself little guidelines like this, where you just kind of guide through there. But that's that's really all, all you're going to do is little C's and S's. 
So I'm just going to go through and I'm going to start over here and I'm just going to do these little, little backward C's. Those just represent the shadows in between. And as you get to the edge, you just keep doing more and more and more and then And then I'm just going to go C's the other way. Start out kind of from the center of those little C's that we just stuck in there. Here's little C's this way. And it creates a wonderful texture. Oh, man. Then you just go back the other way. And I'll, just, I'll just zoom into that so you can see what I'm doing. But I did C's this way. Now I'm going to do C's this way. Some people will do S's where they kind of... Do a little S, but I like the C's. You can do that with uh, with colored pencils, too. If you look at some of those colored pencil drawings I did of people in armor, <clears throat> you just do it dark, and then you just put these little C's and S's with the light over the top, and you got it. That took me a long time to figure out for some strange reason. Then you can hatch through it. If it's dark, you just hatch through it, and that texture comes through. That's really all you need is the texture. You can take this as long, as far as you want it to go. You can get this very, very tight if you want to with ink. Or you could leave it kind of loose and fresh. I had a friend that used to call this, when you draw kind of loose and fresh, or paint, call it juicy. Leave it kind of juicy. Well, hopefully you had fun, and hopefully you learned something today. Different surfaces. What's that? Learned how to do chain mail. How to do chain mail. That's worth it. I'll tell you what, once you start drawing fantasy stuff, that's it's worth it. I've made so much chain mail in my life. We've got about uh, two minutes left is all. Remember, this is all about technique. It's all about experience. So often my students get kind of discouraged because it doesn't look like mine. But that's okay because eventually, as you learn, you'll find your own voice. And it'll, it'll look good. It'll be you. But you need to start somewhere. Good place for a uh, signature is right, right over her wrist on the on her left wrist. So somewhere over there. And I hope you have a lovely day.